Hello everyone, my name is Yusuf Kazemi and I'm the Outreach and Production Manager for the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. We're happy to be here today to present the OFNMO Pivotal Work Early Access Series. This video series is a preview of our 2021 Oklahoma Film and Music Conference, which we hope to host physically next year. We're here at Castle Rose Studios in Dell City. We've got Visual Brain helping us behind the camera. And I'm very excited to welcome our guests today for our panel, Making Music Videos in Oklahoma. So if you would, could I get each of you to please introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, thank you so much for having us. I'm Maggie McClure. I am a singer songwriter and more recently have gotten into acting and I'm also the president of Searchlight Music Group and grew up in Norman, Oklahoma and uh, proud to be back here in Oklahoma right now. Awesome, thank you, Maggie. Mm -hmm. I'm Shane Henry, singer songwriter, guitar player and the other half of the Imaginaries, which is our band together. Yes. And uh, grew up here in Oklahoma and happy to be here today. So. Awesome. And I'm Reagan Elkins, owner and founder of Intellego Media. And I'm just looking at all the drums right now as a drummer and just drooling, <laughs> staring at all these old benches, drums and stuff. This is such a cool Impressive location to be studio, at. This right? is awesome. It's this is very cool. exciting. Well, it's going to get cozy. We have a lot to unpack here for making music videos in Oklahoma. Yeah. So I want to start with each of you and maybe we'll, we'll start here and go this way. Mm -hmm. How did you get started um, as a filmmaker also now making music video sure okay well we have to go back let's think um I mean, it really started at a young age uh being interested in video with my dad's eight millimeter camcorder and making uh, stupid videos with my brothers and what's interesting is we kind of lean more towards music videos so we'd record rap songs and dance and stuff and and uh ended up uh you know submitting to an like a American Bankers Association put on this whole little competition, won the regional and the national with this stupid video. And we were like, maybe we could do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually enrolled at OCCC and, uh, and got my you know film production degree and all that stuff and started into Lego Media. And uh, I remember my first like real start was with a local company in Chickasha where I'm from. And I grew up born and raised there, fourth generation Chickasha. Um, and I was so nervous. They, they asked for a, a commercial and I had never done anything professional like that, you know, to that degree. And uh, I just did my best and tried really hard. And I remember the owner watching it in front of me. We were all there gathered around the screen and uh, she ended up loving it. And at that point I was like, I think, I think this could work out. That's awesome. Yeah. So with that, with that first film experience, mm -hmm. how did you prepare going into that? Oh my gosh, man. It was really just like, be on top of your game, do as good as you can, <laughs> and let's see what happens, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, as far as just getting started in it, I mean, there was a lot of trial and error. There really was. Um, but it's it's taken a long time to get to, you know, where we are right now and and uh, making music videos and, and having lots of fun. Yeah, so. you've clearly done well. You built a whole company for yourself, Thank a you. diverse portfolio of Thank lots of you. different project types it's and lots fun. of collaboration with these guys now. Yeah. Maggie, yeah. tell us how you got started in the music industry. Oh, goodness. Well, um, I started writing songs when I was very young and recorded my first um, original solo album when I was 17. And I mean, it all has just grown from there. I've recorded and released five solo albums. Shane and I have collaborated on multiple Christmas projects and now The Imaginaries, which is our new band together. And um, I, I went to OCU, Oklahoma City University and studied music business there. That definitely was very pivotal in my career. Um, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I signed up to be a music major. I was in the practice room about four hours a day for four years. And <laughs> I really got whipped into shape musically. And then um, also had a good dose of business classes as well, which has really helped me um, just be a well-rounded business person, which we have to be these days as musicians. So that's uh, the the short story and uh, have just been doing this and been pursuing music and doing music full time in one way or another, which usually consists of at least a dozen things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I just am very fortunate to be able to do what we do. Um, born and raised in Norman, and uh, after Shane and I got married, we moved to Los Angeles and lived there for about six years. And very happy to be home now. We're happy to have you back, <laughs> for sure. Thank you. Yeah, and what about you, Shane? So um, I grew up in a little small town, Verdon, Oklahoma. And, you know, there's there was basically two options in school. It was sports or sports. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, baseball or uh, basketball is it. And uh, around seventh grade, I, you know, I started getting really interested in music. Um, I was always interested growing up. My dad played guitar and uh, there was always great music playing throughout the house. But um, I'll never forget probably the summer of 96. He took me to see B.B. King. And so I went to the B.B. King Blues Festival and and saw Bonnie Raitt, Buddy Guy, and B.B. King, and was instantly just, uh, I knew that I wanted to be a musician uh, from that experience, and so I got a guitar, and soon thereafter started just going home after school and locking myself in my bedroom and, and practicing, and um, you know, at that time, I mean, we didn't even have internet growing up, you know, it was like we grew up in the country, and uh, there was no music in school, so I learned to play by listening to records and stuff like that, stuff like that, and so, um, fast forward, uh, you know, made my first record when I was uh, 16. I recorded in a little studio in Oklahoma and then started playing gigs while I was still in high school and um, caught the uh, interest of a management company in Minneapolis called Blue Sky Artist Management. And I moved there right out of high school at 18 and uh, was in the Twin Cities for about four years. Um, through that time, I made a record with uh, Double Trouble, Stevie Ray Vaughan's backing band, and uh, did a national tour opening for BB King which was a 30-day national tour. And um, pretty much that set me on the road to pursuing this and being a musician. You know, I've made five records since, and now we're doing the Imaginaries together, and uh, yeah. Awesome, and I've had the pleasure of seeing you guys live a few times as solo artists, but what influenced your decision to pair together as the Imaginaries? I mean, it was a, uh, you want to, do you want me to go ahead and take yeah, this? Yeah, Yeah, so the Imaginaries was something that just kind of happened over the course of years of us collaborating. Um, back in 2012, we started doing some college touring and we were solo artists at the time. Maggie uh, scored a college booking agent and was playing like 80 shows a year at colleges. And at the time we were, we were um, still dating and we uh, uh, basically loaded up in the van and started driving across the country and I'd play guitar for her. And so we started collaborating in that sort of way early on just she would play piano with me when I had a solo gig, mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. And then as when we moved to Los Angeles, um, we started having opportunities to write for with different artists, uh, different collaborations. We started writing songs together more and we found a way to do that in a collaborative way. And then this new sound kind of started to emerge, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and then fast forward in 2015, we kind of did our first project together, which was we released a Christmas single. And uh, that was kind of the first thing we did with our song, First Thing on My Christmas List, which Reagan did, did a video for. <laughs> and um, uh, anyways, through this collaborating together on the Christmas music and writing with other artists. And just playing it, together as a duo yeah, for it just, so long. It just all sort of was like, hey, this is kind of a next step. It was mm -hmm. kind of an obvious thing. And, and then um, we had this opportunity to go to Muscle Shoals in, uh, two years ago and do this thing called the One Mic Series, where um, we were recording with a band in a studio, all around one microphone, one take, all live, one camera. And our, it was our friend, John Cuniberti, who was putting this, this series on. Mm -hmm. And so he was finding artists to go to different studios all over the country and do this. And, and I'll interject, we submitted my project and we submitted Shane's. And John came back to us and said, I really love you both, but I only have one slot. Can you guys do it together? Love for you so, to do it I mean, together. really, John is kind of, he, he was one of the, I mean, he kind of pushed us in this direction a little yeah. bit. And then we got this opportunity. We went to Muscle Shoals. We did the one mic. We had this amazing experience of, man, this was really, this was really cool. We got to do something brand new and fresh. And um, we decided to go back there and, and record our debut album. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the, how that's, it all came to be. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you referenced a few minutes ago mm -hmm. wearing multiple hats. And I know on the film side, that is very true. Right. So can maybe you talk about on the music side, you know, um, and everyone has a different path to music too. 
um, you had music school and the business side of things, mm -hmm. but maybe how you ha how musicians have to be able to wear those hats to promote themselves, to get gigs, like how important is that? It's extremely huh. important. I think today you can't not do all these things because, you know, we don't have a manager. We don't have a booking agent. We are essentially everything. Mm -hmm. And so I am, I am our manager. We do our own booking. Um, we do our marketing or do our own social media. Um, it's a lot and a lot, <laughs> it's a lot of not glamorous stuff. Honestly, it's a lot of computer work and, um, you know, you have to consciously make time to work on your craft as well, which can easily get pushed aside when you're working so hard on the business aspect. But I think in today's climate, musicians, no matter what you're doing, if you're a, if you're an artist, if you're a band, if you're um, a session player, whatever you're doing, if you're working um, strictly in film, if you're doing music for film, I think you just have to hustle these days and Absolutely. you have to find opportunities and um, you have to create opportunities. And uh, we've really learned that um, throughout the decade or more that we've been doing this and that, you know, it's really important to just think about what you want and figure out a way to make it work. And um, yeah, I just think all of those hats are very, very important and you have to tend to each thing. And a lot of people don't have the luxury anymore these days unless you're like a major label artist. And even then, I'm sure you're still working in these other areas sure. to a certain degree. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's only so many of the, the John Mayers or the people who, you know, in the early you know, 2000s or whatever was signed and, you know, became a, a megastar. Now they can, they can set and make records, but artists yeah. that are coming up today, they've got to figure out other things that they can do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, one thing that, that Maggie and I do that, that probably a lot of people don't know about is we, we have a library of music that we, we create cues for film and TV. We have a friend in LA that we work with, um, our friend Devin Powers. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different ways. It's not just our pure artistry, which is where our real true passion is, you know, but hey, if you're, if you can make money with a guitar in hands or doing what you love, that's still winning, you know, mm -hmm. that's still um, what we're trying to do, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And what about you, Vega? First, I'd like to say how proud I am of these two because for outside looking in as we develop our relationship, I've got to see how much work they put into their craft. I mean, they're passionate about what they do. And so Maggie and Shane, they don't stop. They just don't stop. They're always working, always making connections. That's really what it's about too. Absolutely. You never know what connection is going to lead to what. Yeah. So you have to always be developing your craft, one, and also making connections. Um, especially if you're doing your own social media, you know, managing yourself, whatever it may be. There's so much work and people don't realize how much work goes into it. And I didn't either. I mean, I'm a musician, but I am not a professional musician in that way. And so to see that happen, uh, to see it actually functioning, I have so much respect for people in the music industry and especially people like Shane and Maggie who are doing it themselves. Absolutely. Thank what you. about Thank you? you. How, did you, how did you all, you mentioned a video yes. in 2015, how did you all get connected together? Well, actually we <laughs> met, we officially met, he said that he saw me perform yep. earlier when I don't even remember it, yep. but we officially met in 2016 at Drover Stock, right? Yep. So Our, Matt, Reagan's band, Jenkin yep. Valley, opened yep. for us. Yep. And then Reagan, uh, being the networker he is, uh, sent me a message on Facebook and said, hey man, I love your stuff. Yeah. I'd love to do a music video with you. Yeah. And little and did he know- And your wife, Maddie, also sent messages. Yeah, exactly. and Little, little yeah. did he know that, that, that I was gonna take him up on his offer and then it was gonna yep. set us on this road of, mm -hmm. of collaboration, but mm -hmm. um, that's how we met, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Again, that was- making connections, you yeah. know, networking, whatever it may be. You never know what will happen. So yeah, and it's been awesome. It, it's really cool too. Um, what I've seen with you know making professional connections like that has turned into friendship, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, you know, we have the artistic minds, and we both we collaborate well together. Um, but no, it, it started out really, um, um, yeah. I reached out to Shane, 
and he reached out. I don't know how much longer. It was probably. It was a little, I mean, I think a little bit of time went by, but it wasn't much, maybe yeah. a few weeks or so, maybe a month, who knows. Well, right. there's only certain times in the artist cycle when you need videos. Right. And, so right. We and I was coming up on an album release, mm -hmm. so it worked out really well, but um, yeah. So that brings up an interesting point, the artist cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, certain times you're needing music videos. When When is that time? Yeah, well, for us, I mean, everyone works differently, but for us, it's been when we have the song completely done and we have a vision for the release of that song. So one thing that we've really focused on with the Imaginaries album is releasing one single at a time with a video leading up to the album release. Um, multiple singles, whereas before with our solo projects, we didn't really do that many singles. No, we would do like up. maybe one single with a video yeah. and release it. But I think with the Imaginaries, Maggie and I both felt like we were kind of starting over again, you know, after having, you know, 10, 15 year, oh my gosh, it's 15 years, we're dating ourselves. I know. <laughs> um, 15 plus years of doing solo music and making records. Starting a new band is kind of a new endeavor. And it's like getting everybody to kind of see what that's all about. And you know, we wanted to just really bring these songs to life, just like in the songwriting realm, you know, you're, you're creating stories and we want to be able to visually create that too. And that's what's mm -hmm. so great about working with Reagan is we could come to him with all of these songs and say, this is our vision for this. And then we were able to collaborate and put that on screen. And I feel like for us starting off with a new band and a new project, it's a little bit more uh, captivating to people and it pulls mm -hmm. people in it makes them listen a little bit more. I mean, First I impression. think that, you know, we're, maybe there's still people that can put a record on and still connect, but I think we've become such a visual mm -hmm. society now. Like everybody is seeing content. It's it's everywhere we, we go now. Mm -hmm. it's content's thrown down our face. So, yeah. so having those videos is very key for us. And I think doing the videos with plenty of time so you can have them before they come out. Mm -hmm. And as we've learned, submitting to different <laughs> film festivals right. now, right. Um, they a lot of the time don't want to feature a music video that's already been released. Right. So it might even be good to have it done six months to a year before you actually want it to come out. And thankfully for us, we had quite a few music videos in the can before the pandemic. And mm -hmm. so we were able to continue to roll those out and um, even create more in a safe way. Um, but the timing of it can change for everyone. But when you have this, the song done and you have a plan for the release and allowing plenty of time to really develop that idea, um, because each song dictates what that video is going to be. Mm -hmm. And we've learned they're so different. Yeah. Each song yeah. and each video is its own piece of art. And you have to allow enough time to really flesh out all the ideas and really come up with a great plan and then to execute that plan also takes time and then the editing process yeah. obviously yeah and tagging onto that too is like as a director each band has their own brand i mean i've i've had the pleasure of working with all kinds of different bands from different genres and stuff too but you know you know this band is not going to be the same style as the imaginaries and so you really have to pick each band's brain and say okay what what would you know characterize your band so for the imaginaries it was earthy tones mm -hmm. one and wide open landscapes adventure and adventure yeah. exactly mm -hmm. this adventurous vibe and so the story oriented I, I lean more towards story oriented oriented films rather commercial corporate whatever it may be anyway and so the music videos led into this narrative um, I mean, it, it just worked out. We, we needed to tell a story, I think is what we came to the conclusion on. In each of these films, if you'll watch, we're telling stories. And it's not always easy to do in three minutes. Oh, right. Right? And a lot of uh, uh, filmmakers will look at music videos, kind of look down on them, like, oh, that's easy. No, no, no. Well, you narrative films, yes, it, everyone, I respect all different types of films, but you got to think about telling a compelling story in a short amount of time. That takes a lot of work, a lot of research, a lot of planning. Yeah. Um, and so the collaboration process is key. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's really cool to see the melding of different art forms. So you have the music, and they had so much passion, and there's always a story behind the song. Um, where were you in your life whenever you wrote this? Um, what you know? What were your struggles? What were your joys? Whatever it may be. Um, and how can we make what we hear come to life visually? Mm -hmm. And that's really what music videos are about. 
Um, and you have to remember too, as and I have to calm myself down a lot of times as a director, it's not about what I want, it's about what the band wants. Right. And so you find a happy place in the middle and there's a lot of bands and thankfully uh, the imaginaries are like this, where they want to hear my side, here's what I'm seeing. And then they'll say, here's what we're seeing. Right. And then we find a happy place. And that's really where the story comes from. Well, and that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to hit on, the collaboration mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So you as the director, w w I feel like you as the artist have a vision. Mm -hmm. Who comes to who first? And maybe each band is different too. Right. Have you ever approached a band yes. like, I, this is your song, I have an idea for this? Or is it vice versa? Like, how, how does right. it typically go? For, for me, it may be different. I would say for someone starting out in music videos, you have to ask one key question. Is, does my style lean towards music videos? You have to be honest with yourself as a filmmaker because a lot of times, you know, one filmmaker, we're all different. We're all different. And so some people don't lean towards the music style, the music video style, the films. Uh, they, they may be more corporate. And so you have to be honest with yourself first and foremost, like, am I going to be able to do this right? And I think going back to what we talked about earlier, the first step for any director or anybody trying to get into music videos is to reach out to a friend and say, or a musical friend and say, hey, let me make a video for you. You know, just approach them and do it for next to nothing or free. And then just see what happens. If it works out, it works out. And then you can kind of start building that resume. But you can't just say, okay, it's gonna be $8,000 for this guy and you've never done a music video before, right? So, um, but what I do typically, it's, it, you know, it started out where I would reach out to bands, say, hey, I really love this song, really love your style, let's collaborate. Um, and you really, like going back to it, you have to make connections. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, put yourself out there and just see what happens. If they don't respond and they, you know, whatever, it's move on to the next person. So, um, but nowadays, it's I'm, I'm typically contacted and bands will reach out and say, hey, how much will it be for this? Or what can you do for this? What's your vision for this? And you have to be prepared to answer those questions. Um, but first and foremost, ask them questions. Um, what's your budget is a key question. Um, what do you envision? Because the, the budget and the vision a lot of times collide. So from a budget standpoint, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of musicians don't have a label behind them. They're self-funded, they're crowdfunded. Mm -hmm. How do you make a budget, whether it's 50, 500, 5,000 right. stretch to tell the vision of the, of the song and the artist? Yeah, right. I think for us, you know, we've made so many different videos and um, I think it all comes down to the song meeting with the director and figuring out, okay, this is the dream situation. Let's make, let's, let's go big. Let's flesh out all these ideas and not even think about budget. Mm -hmm. You have to at least let yourself go there. Cause as we've learned, we can pull off a lot of them without yeah. the budget, but you have to let yourself go there to come up with these really cool ideas first. Yeah. And then figure out, okay, that, that idea, there's just no way that that's going to work unless we have a ridiculous budget. Mm -hmm. So what else can we do that's going to communicate the same message and not break the bank? Right. Or just find different areas. Okay, like we, we've always provided our own wardrobe. We've always done our own hair and makeup. Like that's a way to really cut down mm -hmm. on costs. Um, and just think about, okay, what are the really key things that we need? Who are the really important people? As we've learned, mm -hmm. lighting is yeah. huge. Yeah. And just making sure, and Reagan will say, well, we can't, we can't not have this person. Mm -hmm. So this is a must. Right. And it's a lot of back and forth. And it's, I mean, it's all dictated by the song. Right. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, go, go I was, ahead. Well, I was just gonna ask, so what are the musts on a music video set? Like, yeah. what are the things we're not skimping on? And what, what are those positions, too, where right. people can plug in? I know music videos are maybe different than a commercial, sure. a traditional film. Absolutely. What, what are those things that go in, the people behind the scenes that are right. bringing it to life? So the key individuals, whether, I mean, whether it's a small budget. I mean, okay, well, I'll, I'll tie that into the budget side of things, too. Because if a band comes to me and they say, okay, we have $500. Um, then I'm not going to be able to pay a day rate for a cinematographer or a gaffer or anyone 
it's basically me showing up and editing and that really it's, it's skimping as well on my side so what can i do well we have three songs and we have 500 dollars budget for these three songs or to you know each so 1500 bucks we want to knock these out and maybe do like a one shot you know performance space so let's bundle those together do as much as we can get as much as we can out of that if that makes sense um, but the key individuals you need to have is is a cinematographer you have to have a good cinematographer somebody who knows the camera knows what they're doing mm -hmm. knows lighting and angles uh, a gaffer who knows how to light a scene the right way um, a lot of individual those key individuals and a director um, you can get away with those three now is that ideal situation <laughs> absolutely not like we just got done with the Christmas music video um, and we had I think 10 individuals on set mm -hmm. so we had a production designer um, even some that weren't there we had a set dresser um, you know because it was Christmas we had to make October look Christmas and so we did we had a lot of pre-production process that went uh, was involved with that we had a director of photography a gaffer uh, you know, a G&E dude. We had a lot of PAs um, and and someone on set ready and willing to do makeup as well. Who, in fact, is my sister-in-law, <laughs> and she always was interested. She was she was doing uh, you know uh, plays and stuff. You know, growing up, she would be involved with plays and really liked that side of things. And she also had a hair and makeup background. She's very artsy in that in that way. And so I saw her her as you know a potential individual who might be interested in film. Turns out she was. And so for the past three or four music videos mm -hmm. we've done, she's been involved. And so if you're if you're a hair and makeup person or whether whatever your your you what do you have a degree in something like this, whatever your background may be, if you're interested in film, maybe ask yourself if there's a way that you could help the film industry out right now. Um, if you're interested in lighting, if you've always had that, maybe go to film school and see what happens. Um, but I would encourage people if if you're interested in film, if you have some sort of background, reach out to local companies or the film and music office mm -hmm. and, and find out how you might be able to help yeah. in those areas. I'm always looking for more people, by the way. So like, are you, I mean, sometimes the best school or experience can be volunteering or yes. interning or just oh, jumping yeah. in. So I've had three or four interns of late that have wanted to learn. These are younger guys that have, are, or, or gals that are trying to get into it. Um, one and some of them have reached out to me um, and others I've seen potential in them um, they've made some videos on on Facebook and they're local I'm like hey are you interested in, in film and I really I enjoy kindling that in in young individuals that that are have an interest in film um, so whether it be interning and just getting experience I mean the best education is just getting on set mm -hmm. and learning um, so whether it be a corporate film or music video, whatever, just do your best, try to get on and you'll learn by experience. Um, so there's all kinds of ways to get in, involved. You don't necessarily have to go to film school, although it's encouraged, um, but just hop in. Absolutely. And you referenced um, the upcoming Christmas music mm -hmm. video yeah. in Chickasha. Mm -hmm. I know uh, we're so proud that you guys are from Oklahoma and you have a, a state pride and a community pride. Yeah. So how important is it for you all to be bringing creative opportunities to Chickasha? Because um, I know you guys are very involved, particularly in that community in terms of live performances and now bringing video production. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you guys speak a little bit to that? Sure. Well, I think it all started a few years ago when um, we moved back from LA. We decided that we were going to try to find creative ways to continue to make a living in music in Oklahoma. And one avenue that we thought was very untapped into and also very appealing was connecting with different cities in the state and partnering in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so the first city that we collaborated with was the city of Guthrie um, a couple years ago. They wanted to feature my song, Coming Home. This was before the Imaginaries. And um, we did a music video promotional piece with the city of Guthrie and they used that to promote tourism and economic development and young professionals uh, coming to Guthrie. And that was such an awesome experience and opportunity. Um, uh, it's always been on 
you know, the forefront of our mind, something sure. that we're always aware of, something we're talking about. And if there seems to be an obvious opportunity with any organization or city, we are always going to at least see if it's an option. Right. And so this past year, we got to know Jim Cowan in Chickasha, and he is the new economic development um, council director. And he's been there, what, for? Uh, about a year. About a year. Yeah. And he has become a, a huge fan of the Imaginaries and is such a great guy. He has so much passion and excitement for the city of Chickasha. And uh, he grew up there, correct? Mm -hmm. And he right. moved on and then now he's back. Right. And he has this, this really true heart for the town and very, um, he's very passionate about collaborating with creatives in the community. Mm -hmm. And so Reagan had been working with him uh, for a while mm -hmm. and I had in the back of my mind, okay, well, the Festival of Light is really big in Chickasha. There's this big Christmas culture there. And the first thing that we collaborated on was a Christmas in July concert this past July, which was outside, socially distanced. And we did uh, an entire Christmas set, yeah. which Reagan streamed um, on awesome. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a great experience. And then from that, naturally led to the next conversation. Okay, well now that it's actually coming up on the holidays, is there a way that we could collaborate um, in another way? And Jim was very open to the idea. He was uh, very excited with seeing what I did with Guthrie. I wanted to take the same approach and um, help promote the holidays in Chickasha. And so that's what we've done and it's been a great experience. Um, yeah. They're basically licensing our song, Hometown Christmas, to use for promotional purposes to promote the city, especially during Christmas time. And um, Reagan came in and directed the music video we mm -hmm. shot entirely in Chickasha. Was it a three-day shoot? Three-day shoot. Three-day shoot. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's been really, really awesome to collaborate. Mm -hmm. It's great seeing individuals like that who are passionate about film. His sons are actually in the film industry and have just moved back to Oklahoma, by the way. Very cool. So that's awesome. I think we didn't have yeah. a conversation with them. Yeah. Um, but Jim Cowan, he understands the importance of film and music in a community and what it can do to not only just for the art's sake, but to unify people, to, uh, you know, give something people, to give, give something for people to be excited about. Yeah. You know, whether it be a, a concert or a film that we can have extras in the community to be a part of. It really brings the community together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've seen some feature films come in. I've advised, uh, I was manager on one that came and did a couple, um, or location manager on, a, uh, they did a couple scenes in Chickasha, in the Chickasha area. Um, and I advised another that came in, just to, you know, showing them, I mean, I'm born, in, I mean, I was raised in that town, so I, I know the, the town, but it's, it's virtually, besides those few, it's pretty untapped. And so there's a lot of locations that people don't know about, and I hope that we can kind of develop that more um, to show films what, what a local community like Chickasha can offer. Um, and the same thing can be said for any other small town, you know, whether, you know, if you think you're too far away, you might have the exact thing that that mm -hmm. production needs. Right. And so don't ever think because you're an hour and a half out or whatever it may be, that you're never, that's, it's an impossibility. Although being closer has its benefit. Um, but you know, if you're in a small town, a filmmaker, or whatever it may be, maybe talk to your economic development and see what uh, you guys can do. Yeah, absolutely. On the film side of things, we were having this conversation earlier. Mm -hmm. um, Oklahoma is the busiest it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And with that comes needing to expand the footprint because you know, if, if, if a production's taking over one city, well, these other films are gonna have to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it really does take um, artists like yourselves the support of the community, one, to open the door. And I think all of this is um, a good practice and good start for hopefully bringing more to, to Chickasha and all of the statewide communities right. we have. Absolutely. And Maggie, you referenced licensing mm -hmm. through uh, working with Guthrie and Chickasha in mm -hmm. different cities, but there's also the film aspect of licensing your music. Um, can you speak a little bit about that? Sure. So in the past, probably 12 years, I have had um, a lot of my songs featured in different movies, different TV shows and commercials. And I think my very first placements were like MTV 
real world. <laughs> it was always really funny because oh, the they always would always license so her dumb. songs in the most inappropriate scenes, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just you, let you guys decide you, what those were. Yeah, I know. And you don't really have a say as the artist and musician as to how your song gets used a lot of the time, <laughs> especially when I was starting out. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was a very cool... Um, opportunity with my first solo record and I thought wow this is awesome every single song on my first solo album got licensed within the wow, first year of that's it being amazing released. and without me really doing a lot so I had people approaching me at that time this is 2007 well, a lot has changed since then um, the licensing world has become inundated with content and people wanting to get into that because it is one of the only ways right now, especially to make a living from music, especially when touring isn't in full right. swing. And so um, it's interesting to see how things have changed in that way to where people were approaching me and now I'm approaching them. Um, but it's been a, a, an amazing opportunity to have music showcased in such a way in such an international level to where someone can shazam it and then instantly see who it is and then support mm -hmm. whether it's buying the album or following on social media or whatnot. Um, it's been a huge part of what we do yeah. and has just evolved over the years from people using existing songs yeah. to creating, creating tracks just like the uh, Approaching songs. the Unknown. I did the end credit for a movie called Approaching the mm -hmm. Unknown. Mm -hmm. um, we met the music supervisor at a party in LA and she reached out and said, hey, they're looking for something that's real bluesy. And I know that's what you do. Can you write and record a, you know, a minute and 30 second instrumental piece? And I mm -hmm. said, sure. So I did. You know, yeah. So there's the yeah. connection. Exactly. Aspect. Yeah. yeah. That's the connection aspect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's been huge um, for us as solo artists and also as the Imaginaries. We've already had a couple of placements um, and the debut album isn't even out yet. So that's very encouraging and exciting. And with that being said just like everything else all the different hats that we wear um, being your own advocate and licensing is really important too because yes we've had over 50 different placements with our songs and film and television and ads but literally almost every single one came from a different source wow. and it yeah. came from a series of events happening in a different way personal connection so it's all very uh, it's not random, but it's very specific to each opportunity. It's not like all of them came from the same uh, contact or, or opportunity. So it's been huge for us and definitely something that we are focused on more. And um, I decided to start a company here in Oklahoma, Searchlight Music Group, that focuses on that and licensing Oklahoma artists' music in movies specifically the ones that are being filmed here in Oklahoma and so that's been a really great opportunity for us and yeah. also to help fellow Oklahomans and artists and composers as well get get their foot in the door and how do artists how do local artists connect with your company for that those yeah. opportunities um, our website is searchlightmusicgroup.com and we're on social media as well very accessible and always welcome to hear from potential talent and people interested in collaborating. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, one of your band songs, Walking on a Wire, yeah. that's one that was featured in an Oklahoma rebate film, Infamous. Yes. But you guys also collaborated on a music video for yes. it. Yes. Yeah. This was also done during the time of COVID, which yes. we're currently in, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, you referenced, you know, these videos for this band, they're much more cinematic than some of the more performance-based yeah. music videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What went into that collaboration? And for you all as artists, how was it flipping the script going into a, almost a different performance style that had a lot of acting and, and drama and mm -hmm. storytelling involved? Yeah, see that was that was awesome experience, first of all. Mm -hmm. But first, you have to sit down together and determine what we're going to be doing for this song. Yeah. Um, by the way, Infamous was cool because I was locations manager on that one and I told the director, I was like, hey, you really need to hear my friends. And I showed him in the car, playing, yeah. driving around scouting and I played some of those songs and he was like, holy crap. 
These guys are great. <laughs> so Reagan was the reason why we connected with Josh. Wow. So, so you always, always, always have to be pitching. Yes. And, even, and we're constantly pitching right, him. It always happens. I've had so many bands come to me through the Imaginaries and through them, you know, presenting me. And we do the same. We always help each other out. And that's really how the community, the film Osmosis. community is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to, that, I've noticed that in Oklahoma, the film community, we're always out. We're out for each other's good. We mm -hmm. want to help each other out, give connections wherever we, we can. I mean, I've had so many phone calls from people that are looking for locations help or, or music videos or whatever it may be. And I really love working in Oklahoma for that reason. I mean, the, the, they're so friend, friendly yeah. in that way. You know, Gray Fredrickson told me one time, uh, we, I was taking one of his classes. He said, you know, some of the larger cities, you know, in other states, you know, they say they may say, get off my lawn when you're on a production <laughs> here. <laughs> You go film in a neighborhood and you're more likely to have someone hand you a glass of sweet tea. You know what I mean? The whole dynamic in Oklahoma is just absolutely awesome. And uh, helping each other and collaborating in that way too is, mm -hmm. is, is, a, great, is a great thing. Yeah. So, uh, but as far as walk out on wire, I remember we sat down out at the farm and we just, well, let's just chill for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we sat down, it was at night, it was just a beautiful night. And I remember someone said the word, desert yeah mm -hmm. we're just literally brainstorming it was, yeah. it was maggie ha. well yeah. i had said guys i was in a scene for american gods and i was i was at the de in, in the <laughs> desert yes there's a desert and you're like what <laughs> is there know. really and yep. i'm like yes it's amazing yeah, I've and never been there. it was miserably hot and i thought i was gonna die but it was <laughs> it was epic and uh <laughs> i was like we really need to look into yeah. The Little Sahara in Wainoka. Yep. It's amazing. And so um, we brought that up. And mm -hmm. the important thing to know is that we scheduled the time to do nothing but brainstorm and collaborate. Yep. And it really yes. takes that. Yeah. And it was hours. We it were there was. for hours. And we had dinner and just chilled for long afterwards. Yeah. But it took that one word, just brainstorming ideas, it took one word to spark this whole other this story mm -hmm. and then from that we we developed the a plot b plot you yeah. have all these little parts to it how can we incorporate it in on the desert what's what's going on uh developing all of that from that one word yeah and really you know it all comes from the song mm -hmm. yeah. the song and i really think the song is one of the most obviously important parts of the music video process because it it dictates everything. Mm -hmm. And so for this, when we were writing this song, we were experiencing immense struggle and conflict and that concept of barely hanging on. And so it was really important for us to communicate that visually to our mm -hmm. listeners, mm -hmm. to show this is what we feel and get across, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is serious. Yeah, like, struggle. And it was yeah. all real. I mean, everything mm -hmm. that you saw, I mean, that was us. That's how we feel a lot of the time as artists. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people can relate to that. Um, but really diving into those characters. Mm -hmm. of, but it was really us, like, yeah. in the song. And it was so cool to be able to visually explore right. yeah. this desert. And, and that's the other thing, too, as far as a directing and, and writing standpoint. If you listen to just the lyrics without getting the backstory of what really where the emotion came from, then, I mean, the first, you know, inclination is to say, okay, the lyrics are uh, walking on a wire and, and the waves are crashing under. Okay, well, we filmed in a desert. Where the heck is the wire? Where's where the, are the waves? <laughs> right? But it's not about that. It's deeper than that. It's the metaphor. And so we, we looked past that. I mean, you know, and, well, the first thing you want to do is like, okay, we want to, let's make it exactly to the song. That may not be the best thing. Um, have I done music videos like that? Yeah, because they're pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. But there's so much, a lot of these bands have way more meaning in their lyrics and a place of true emotion where they, where they wrote it from. Now, there are a lot of, you know, just cliche lyrics these days from a lot of different bands you'll hear. But I think it, the job of the director is to get to the heart of the song and then somehow make it visual. Mm -hmm. um, I love that song when they first showed it to me. I was like, wow, this has some really cool vibes, even a Civil Wars-y thing going on and they're no longer a thing and here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there was like a really, really cool vibe to that song. 
And so when we when she said the word desert, it just immediately starts sparking all kinds of ideas in all of us. And so what if we did this, 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 this? And of course, like Maggie said, we went to the extreme, mm -hmm. and we, then we had to come back from La La Land back to reality. <laughs> but and say, in Here's the what end, we yeah, we got Made exactly right. what we really right. pictured. Right. Right. And I would like to point out that we did it the right way and mm -hmm. got permits. Yes. And thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, well, thank you. you yeah, said. thank right. you. And that's how it should always be. And mm -hmm. not only because that's what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. but also because once you go through that process, the people at the parks are mm -hmm. so much more willing to help you. I'm excited. Right. We got so much more help yeah. um, and just Right. That that made a huge difference. So I wanted to point that out because right. a lot of people don't understand the process. Mm -hmm. And even we, you know, before this hadn't really, I don't know if we needed a permit, but we hadn't really pursued that until now. But now that mm -hmm. we have, I can see, okay, this is how it should be. And I would really mm -hmm. encourage other artists and directors filming in the state mm -hmm. to pursue getting a permit. So. Right. I think permits really for Oklahoma is it just for state parks? No, no, there's city and, and, and for there's, city. there's yeah. tons of different permits. And to your point, like mm -hmm. putting on that business hat, it's also practice and important in that mm -hmm. sense too for musicians or if it's directors, yeah. whoever, whoever's right. you know yeah. applying for yeah. the permit right. to to navigate that route because it's right. important, especially in a uncontrolled location right. like Little Sahara or right. other places yeah. where. Right there's still other activity. Right. It protects everyone on so yes. many levels. Right. Right. For, it's very important. And, and the, there is a process you have to go through. Was it a hassle? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. You guys made it so easy. You you have all the connections. Here's the paperwork, fill this out, and then we'll go Just allow process. plenty of time yeah. so you're not in a hurry right. and yes. <laughs> skip that part because it's some very people, important. I think some people just get like, they don't want to, to deal with that. And I think you, they kind of overlook it and they try to find ways around things. Yeah. That's, that's sketchy. Don't yeah. do that. I mean, as a as doing mu music videos or commercials, whatever it may be, my hat looks like producer, director, locations manager, whatever you may have, a, mm -hmm. a whole list of things to do. So it's more work, you know, filling out permits. It's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. But you need to have that so people, is, everybody's on board. Um, you're doing it the right way. You're not stepping on anybody's toes. Yeah. And even the park office at the Little Sahara, they were like, okay, so this may be a good spot yeah, for you. Here's a good hill us. over in this area. This may be perfect. So they, they were helpful because we wanted to go the right route. Mm -hmm. Shout out our Oklahoma State Parks. Yes. They are very film friendly yes. and accommodating Absolutely. on many fronts. Right. So we mentioned you guys did this in COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What advice, starting with you, Sheen, what should musicians and filmmakers during this time when there is no touring, a lot of... Um, live events are now restructured. Mm -hmm. What should artists be doing either in terms of job opportunities yeah. or on behind the scenes, you know, prepping for their next step? Right, man, there's so many things you can do, but I think the first thing is you gotta take action. You gotta think outside of the box, which is something we've always done. I mean, I'm doing a lot of this, like I was telling you, uh, you cues and, and production work for, for film and TV for a library, I'm doing that. Um, you know, we're doing Facebook Live concerts. Uh, we're doing stuff like that online. Uh, we're doing our best to continue to engage our audience in safe ways, you know. Um, it, but it has been a rough year. It's been a tough year for everyone. Mm -hmm. But um, you just have to think outside of the box and keep pushing forward. And that's really kind of what we've done. We've put a lot of our energy into doing our music videos. And one other thing I wanted to touch on that, you know, uh, Maggie was mentioning earlier with the collaboration with Chigashe, you know, that was a that was a paid opportunity for us that she was able to get. And so that's something that artists can do, you know, reach out to to try to find, um, you know, opportunities with different cities because mm -hmm. they all have budgets for outdoor concerts. Yeah. They have budget. They're looking for talent. Um, that's a great place to start. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of some of the things that we're doing. Anything else you want yeah. to add to that? Um, I mean, I just think creating opportunities like we talked about, not just, it would be very easy to go, oh, nothing's happening, I'm so depressed, there's nothing going on, there's nothing to do, what's happening with my life? <laughs> yes, we all have those moments and we have quite a few of them, but you know, you just have to get up and you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, no one is handing us opportunities 
like I said, it's really changed yeah. in the past decade. Um, you know, we last year decided we wanted to book the opening slot for the Brian Setzer tour. So we did. Yeah. I that mean, was, literally. Yeah. We had the idea. Yeah. And I gave I the idea to them, you, right? And you took off with it. And like, then they offered us the tour. Right. Mm -hmm. So they didn't come and approach us. Right. We went after that. So yeah. it's really about, okay, what do I want? How do I get it? Stay hungry. Right. Yes. And, even, and, and I'll yeah. interject too, like even before that, the year prior to that, when we were doing Christmas stuff, you were reaching out to all the different cities across the state mm -hmm. and think of how many gigs you created yeah. for us mm -hmm. that that weren't gigs that anybody would have known about. It was yeah. Christmas tree lightings. Right. It was different, you know, Christmas and, you know, type events yeah. that, hey, we're looking for live music. Oh, this is a great pairing. Yeah. It's very so, smart. Yeah. I, when I think of Christmas, I think of Mariah Carey and then locally, <laughs> I'm like, what are they doing this Christmas? Well, you know, the thing is, the, Chris, the Christmas thing was a happy accident. We wrote this song first thing on my Christmas list with our friend Jeff Silbar. It was a really fun experience. And then we realized right away that there's a lot of opportunities to do Christmas music. Christmas comes every every year mm -hmm. and those songs stay fresh every year. And so it's been really a great opportunity for us financially to right. to use the holiday season as an opportunity to book a lot of parties and, and gigs. Unfortunately, this year it's gonna be different for us. Right. We can't book all the you know, the, the private events that we typically do or the tours. But we were able um, to connect with Chickasha, do this right. video, right. and, you know, we're having a different opportunity sure. this season, right. yeah. which is very exciting. Yeah, you can't stop. Right. No. You can't stop. I mean, even through COVID and all that stuff, you, you take the precautions that are necessary, mm -hmm. but you can't just stop. Um, I, even, you know, with, with on the film side, too. I mean, we luckily, we have so many, music, like, feature films coming in, um, you know, but corporate and all that stuff there there's a lot of businesses that have struck like suffered um and so finding the businesses you got to think about on, on that side too right now maybe a perfect opportunity for them to put a commercial together to help market themselves to get themselves back up um and so you always have to put yourself out there always reach out always make connections mm -hmm. don't stop don't and when you fail too don't let that define you um we've all gone through so much failure even in my company, the first year and a half, two years was just like, I can't even, I can't pay my bills. And suddenly, because of reaching out and because of just just this state, um, you know, it is, it's worked out. And business is coming and flowing in even through COVID. And there's a lot of bands that would like to take advantage of, of this downtime where they're not on tour, whatever it may be, to put some visual content together safely, mm -hmm. obviously. So, um, so don't stop. If you're a musician and you're looking for something, you know, like you're looking to do music videos or to promote yourself, uh, do it. Yeah. Find a way to do it. Absolutely. And so. I, I would also like to add, you know, people are even more accessible than ever now. Mm -hmm. Everyone is open to collaborating to a certain extent. Reach out to someone that you want to collaborate with mm -hmm. because they might respond and they mm -hmm. might say yes. Absolutely. Well, and I feel like that's what I've seen too with a lot of artists now being at home. I mean, uh, you've got Blake Shelton making his music video on his ranch. I mean, because people are in their home states, right. they're sure. getting creative, right. yeah. tapping into resources here and just mm -hmm. doing what they can. Yeah. So I think it's brilliant. So I have two more questions, I think, for you all. Um, I'm going to ask you this one because it might be one to kind of think about. Um, the name of this is Pivotal Work. So I want to know what makes this work pivotal to you. But before we get to that question, can you guys answer like what audiences and what you guys are working on next? Sure. So for the Imaginaries, um, as I mentioned, thankfully, we have a couple of videos in the queue ready to go. Yep. And in 2021, we are looking forward to releasing our next single and then the debut Imaginaries album. So we're very excited about that. And we don't know what touring is gonna look like, but we're gonna make it work, whatever the situation is. And we're excited to get this music out there and continue to release new content and keep the momentum going with that. That's our main focus right now. It's exciting and congratulations. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. What about you? Uh, more of these music videos that we've already uh, put together. One we are finishing up right now. 
Um, I'm excited for people to see that. Personally, I've been working on a passion project for two and a half years. Uh, literally, it's been put to the side. And it's interesting, it's a short film, but it is 100% uh, music-led. So it's it's a music video, you know, edited. I had a, a, a time frame, time signature that I actually edited the, the, the project to. And uh, it was scored to that. Um, so it's it's more of a music video short film. I'm very, very excited to, to uh, release that. Hopefully uh, submit to Dead Center and all that stuff. Uh, but it's not done. That's a passion project of mine. We'll see what other things, you know, help me put it to the side. But <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that will be released soon. But that's that's what's coming from me. Awesome. We're yeah. looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, so good. why is this work pivotal for you? Oh, my gosh. Why don't you guys go first? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. Yeah. Well, I mean, this work is everything to us. It's mm -hmm. our life. I mean, um, we're so grateful that we could be here in our home state and be able to do what we do. And it's not easy. Um, you know, being in the music industry is probably one of the hardest things you could choose to do, but yeah. we didn't choose to do it. It shows us. Right. And we we are responsible to fulfill our calling and that's what we we plan to do no matter what and um i think um if the state could um think about different ways that they could collaborate with musicians like right. we've done with the cities mm -hmm. what an awesome thing it would be if the cities were approaching artists instead of the artists having to come up with the idea and approach right. it and make it happen um because there is budget for different things like that. And there are opportunities. We just have to make them happen and, mm -hmm. and help them come to fruition. And I think for us, um, having more places to perform that uh, appreciate and uh, value live original music is something that is really important to us. And yeah. there's a few venues that we we really do like to play at that do that yeah um, but i think also it, we need to somehow get the culture of oklahoma to think about when an artist is performing their original music um let's listen yeah. Let, don't be on it, your phone. Yeah. Don't be texting. Being Don't be talking. Background music. I mean, it's so it's, it's, it's so crushing. Just it, it is. I mean, you, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the thing that we need to work on with Oklahoma in general is that there's so many gigs that musicians are doing that pay decent. You know, they pay pretty good. They might make 500 bucks a night. You know, to play a duo gig at a restaurant, but mm -hmm. they're ultimately background music, and that's not nurturing creativity and artistry. Um, but those are two different things. And I mean, for right now, my heart goes out to musicians, mm -hmm. friends of mine who are guitar players, who, who aren't in a band, who aren't artists, you know, um, they make their living playing gigs. You know, what are they doing right now? They're struggling. They're, ha they're having a hard time. But, you know, we have to just keep trying to think outside of the box and find ways to keep moving forward, you yes. know? Yeah. I think to go back to what Shane said earlier, um, you know, it is about, it's about the collaboration and all that, but you have to remember that we do live in a visual state. Very much. We're all on our social media, YouTube, whatever. I mean, just think about how many movies, uh, Netflix is just through the roof right now with, with, with the pandemic. Right. People, are, people are living their life through visual media, right. you know? So what music videos does for a band is allows them to tap into that. Sure. By bringing their music to life visually. Yeah. And so they can tap into what's going on. We live in this visual media, you know, culture. Mm -hmm. They, you know, if you bring their their music to life, um, people can see them, first of all, see who they are, their personality, their brand, everything about them. It's a marketing tool, but it's also an artistic thing. Mm -hmm. so, right. Uh, and the other thing I'd like to say is like, you know, as you develop your resume, the you know, the money gets larger. But if it's all about the money for you, then I don't know if music videos is really where you, <laughs> you want to be. Right. Because a lot of these bands are, you know, they're they're self-managed. They're independent. And there's not a whole lot of extra money sometimes. Um, you know, where you know, as opposed to some who are have huge labels or whatever it may be. Um, so really it's a service to help these bands um, get the exposure that they need. Yeah. Um, and the bands need to know too, and I think that's where Maggie comes in, how, what to do with it afterwards. 
That's not where I come in. That's not my expertise. My expertise is not marketing and all that stuff. But she has the connections, the people to, to put, give the video to and say, hey, do your thing. Um, but it's pivotal in that area. Yeah. You have to, it's, it's really about collaboration. It's helping each other out. I mean, not all, it's, it's good for me too. I'm developing a resume and obviously larger productions have come to me um, because of it. Um, but you really have to think about the artist. Yeah. It's like they, they need to tap into this visual culture that we're in. Um, and so I think that's, that's the benefit of music videos. Mm-hmm. I want to um, add one thing too. Yeah. You know, we booked the Brian Setzer tour based off of our music videos. I mean, Scott told me when he saw our videos, that's Brian's manager that uh, I got to know. I got to actually meet him in person um, at NAMM this, this year. And he told me, he said, I was so impressed, you know, by your, your music videos. So I just want to say that we landed a national tour based yeah. on the work that we've created. Yes. So. And whenever we're sending out emails to people that we would like to collaborate with, I mean, that's in the email, mm-hmm. our most recent music videos. It's opened so many doors for us. Um, a lot of people are like, how can you justify like spending money on that? And I'm like, because uh, it oh, opens sorry. so many doors that we right. don't even know are going to be opened right. yet. Right. And it, it's been huge for us to have those and then be the quality right. and level this that they quality are. was what I was about to say. You have to have the quality too, because yeah. I even tell my corporate clients too, like the quality of your productions reflects you as a company. So if you, they go to your website and it's this dinky video of you like waving your hand around or <laughs> save, 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 whatever it may be, um, they're not going to take you seriously. So as for a band, uh, when they click on your video and it's a dinky video shot on a handy cam, they're immediately going to think, I'm not going to hire these people. Yeah. And so my job as a director is to make them look as professional as possible, to make the film as professional as possible with whatever budget it may be. So do your best. And I think that's a, I mean, people, we should do that anyway. Right. Do our best in everything we do. And I've, I've noticed that's a common trait in Oklahomans. We do our best. We work hard. You don't work. You don't eat. That type of stuff. We have that the ingrained in us. Um, so do your best. Make make it quality content. Um, so any, any perspective, any people that are looking into the music video world, uh, keep that in mind. Your goal is to make the band look good. Obviously, you know, it reflects you as well. So that goes on your resume. You know, it's really cool to see some of the publications that you guys have been able to achieve, like uh, American Songwriter, mm-hmm. uh, Diddy Cowboys TV. and Indian yeah. Indians and Magazine, all that stuff, yeah. all those great places where our, my music videos, our music videos mm-hmm. are being featured. Yeah, really, yeah. Really cool. it is really cool. I mean, there's nothing like it when our publicist says, hey, you're gonna be on Diddy TV tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's so cool, let's turn it on. And I'm like, oh, there we are. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's, awesome. it's it's really cool and it's awesome to be so proud of it too. Not just mm-hmm. the fact that we're on there, but yeah, we worked really hard on that and I'm really, really proud of how yeah. that turned out. And, and be prepared for comments, constructive criticism. Yes. <laughs> if, uh, if you are a filmmaker and you don't take constructive criticism very well, Maybe you should look for a different. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> hey, because it really is. A, once again, it's a collaboration process. Mm-hmm. So if you give the first edit and they have a thousand notes, be prepared for it. That's just part of the process. Like I tend to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. Like, because because we're all artists. Yeah. And we all want it to be the best it can be. Right. And that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Right. And we're grateful that Reagan understands that. Mm-hmm. And it turns out to be excellent and we always strive for whatever we uh, put out to be better than the last thing we did and to be an excellent product Mm -hmm. awesome well you guys seem to be doing it throughout this time pivoting finding new ways to collaborate and produce content so congratulations thank you thank Thank you you all for being here and being a part of our making music videos in oklahoma series thank you thanks for having us can't wait to see what comes next yeah it's gonna be great and thank you all for watching our pivotal work early access series